All right, hello everybody. My name is Dalton Rutherford, and welcome to the uh, presumably long-awaited return of Sailwind on the channel. In the previous episode, it was it wasn't really an episode, but we'll treat it as an episode. We came back here to the Sage Hills from the uh, from the Dragon Cliffs, and we're gonna start heading out westward towards Alonk. I've already got our cargo and our missions loaded up, but we have one mission that is paying pretty well that's taking T to Gold Rock City. And as you can see, it's basically just a straight shot westwards. Uh, so it's a pretty easy journey, all things considered. Nothing too uh, extravagant, shall we say. And this will be our first official open ocean crossing. I don't really count... Um, ba, 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 what is it? Happy Bay as like an actual open open ocean crossing. I mean, it is open ocean, but it's not like really going from one region to another region because Happy Bay, while it's technically part of the Eastern region, it still relies on the Dragon Cliffs currency. So it, it's kind of a mixed bag with Eastern and Dragon Cliffs, but I believe it's it belongs more to the Dragon Cliffs, so it's technically Dragon Cliff territory. Well, technically also being Eastern territory, but you know what I mean. It, it, it to me, it's more part of the Dragon Cliffs. But Alonk is another beast entirely. We have to cross all of this, and it takes a it takes a pretty decent amount of time in real life. And I just got home from work. I I haven't done anything. I haven't even taken my shower uh, after coming home from work, so let's just go ahead and get underway. I'll probably take a shower uh, at some point during the video, just after we've gotten underway. Um, let's go ahead and raise this thing up. And I'm not, I'm not playing on the beta yet, which I will go over with you guys at some point in this video. I'll need to bring it up at some point or another. Though most of you guys will have probably already seen it. It is on the Steam page as well as uh, the Discord as well. So this will be the last time we see the Dragon Cliffs for a while. I suspect we'll probably mess around for a little bit in in uh, Alonk, but. We'll, we'll be back sooner rather than later, I suspect. Um, like I said, I want to try and export predominantly tea to other areas. That, that's basically what our job is. We are, tea, we are tea exporters, not really anything else. So, I kind of flirted with the idea of um, just like taking a full load of tea to, say, Alonk to, to Gold Rock City, then heading straight back with an empty hull. Problem is, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for a ship to travel such a long distance while empty. It probably happens on occasion in real life, but I imagine that if you are a ship owner, you want it to make money as, as much as you possibly can. All right, well, let's get this thing pointed in the right direction. I think I want to be roughly parallel with the island here. Yeah, that'll work nicely. At least as a, as a starting point, anyway. All right, let's run up here and raise up the forward sail. And raise up the back sail. Now, admittedly, I've never tried putting latines or anything on this particular ship, but if possible, I want to try and upgrade to the sandbuck like sooner rather than later now let's try and keep heading 
just straight westward as much as we possibly can. That'll do just fine. Swing you out. Check the wind. All right. I keep getting this uh, pulley mixed up with this one over here. All right, so all sails are catching as much wind as they possibly can. In all honesty, it probably wouldn't hurt to try and swing them around the opposite direction. Let's see if we can do that. There we go. That's more like it. And you know what? Just so there's not as much wind shadow, I might just keep it like that. That way the main sail is catching all its wind, and you've got the two smaller sails catching as, as much wind as they possibly can. I think I'm just going to keep it like that for a little while. And from this point on, it's basically just... Uh, gonna be on autopilot we'll check the wind we'll check our uh, navigation every once in a while and I'm gonna try and point it just a teeny tiny little bit to the north still heading predominantly west but uh, just a little bit to the north probably isn't gonna hurt and for the first time in this particular series let's throw this thing overboard and we'll see how fast we're actually going Uh, give or take about seven knots. Oh. Yeah. Seven knots. Not. It's not great, but it's not terrible. It'd probably help if I just. Brought these sails back in. We're not in any big hurry. Um. I'll, I'll kind of show you how much time we have with the uh, with the mission itself. So the mission, <laughs> we have 35 days to get to Alonk. It's not going to take us 35 in-game days. It's not going to take, take us anywhere near that much time. But we have um, three crates of tea here. We have two under here, so that's three and four. That's seven. Then we have another one up here. That makes for a grand total of eight crates of tea that are going to be selling for a little under four grand, I believe. And then the mission itself is uh, 708 all on clients, which is crazy. Okay, we don't want to abandon that. Let's Let's not abandon that. And while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and throw this thing back overboard. I want to see if just switching the sails around made much of a difference. Actually, it did. It made a heck of a lot of difference. We were going about seven knots. Now it's trying to even out around eight or nine. So it did make a difference. It is by no means the fastest that I've ever gone in this particular boat, but, well, of course, you know, if, it would probably help if I, <laughs> if I brought this thing around, too. I'm going to angle that one out just a little bit. All right. Try this again. Give it a bit of time for the wind to kind of catch up. So yeah, it's averaging more around nine. It's trying to get up to ten though, so depending on how the wind's blowing, we might actually get up to around nine or 
10 or more knots, who knows? Uh, I'm gonna go and turn these, li these lights on. I get rid of all the lights, in, in case you couldn't tell. While it, it does make the ship very pretty to look at, <laughs> it is a little uh, strenuous on my eyes, so I kind of decided to just get rid of a lot of the lights. And speaking of which... There we go. Now you guys can see what's going on uh, down here in the cabin. Probably won't be able to see a lot of what's going on up here at the bow, though. That's kind of unfortunate, but uh, what can you do, I suppose? And I've got more than enough uh, food and water to last us this entire journey. Got four, uh, four crates of water, or four barrels of water. And then I have... Um, I'm going to say six crates of salmon. Yeah, there's two, two, and then I've got two on top of here. So six crates of salmon, that's six times 12. Um, 60? I, I was never good at math. Let's see here. You've got the two, carry the one. So 72? I'm going to say 72. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. <laughs> Math was never my strong suit. <clears throat> if you hear any coughing in the video, by the way, like that, I'm not feeling good today. I didn't call in sick or anything, but... Um, the garbage truck that I'm working in has, it, it's it's our spare, so it has a lot of issues going on. Our, our main truck had some electrical stuff going on, so we had to take the spare out. And it has the smell of burning oil in it, and it's, <laughs> it's enough to make you sick, trust me. So tell you what, while I am just kind of sailing along here, let's go ahead and bring up the changes to the beta version. All right, so the main change is uh, auto saves. Your game will now auto save automatically. Um, your save progress, it saves your progress like every five minutes. It can be, it will later be customizable. So if it saves, if five minutes is too fast for you, you can, you can change it to a different setting. And it will store up to five separate saves. Uh, better recovery. Recovery will now bring you to the last port you visited. This includes all ports, not just the capital cities. So that means, like, say if you depart from uh, the Sage Hills, where I just was, and then I decide I need to recover for whatever reason, I go straight back to the Sage Hills. I don't go back to um, the Dragon Cliffs. <laughs> this is kind of a double-edged sword in some ways because I'm 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 gonna admit I have exploited the the recovery option quite a bit if if you sail out to Happy Bay for example and you recover the boat you go straight back to the Dragon Cliffs so it's very easy to build up money by just sailing out to uh, Happy Bay taking on a load of missions that pay really well and then just recovering the boat, you lose, you know, some of your money, but you make that money plus, you make that money back plus plenty more whenever you arrive at the Dragon Cliffs from recovering your boat. Uh, so that's kind of a double-edged sword. I, I kind of agree with it, but on the other hand, <laughs> the, the gamer side of me is like, you should have kept that in. Uh, so moving on to other features, we, have, we now have better sinking. Increase the amount of water a boat needs to take before it sinks, which is very good. A lot of the, a lot of the times, especially in the cog, it seems like water. It took like no water at all for that particular boat to sink. There is now a hull creaking sound, which gets increasingly louder as your boat gets heavier and closer to sinking. Recovering your boat after sinking will now also recover all cargo, furniture, and items on the boat. That's interesting. Better docking. Uh, you can now push your boat off a dock from inside the boat. 
which is very, very nice. Um, you should now be much less likely to be pushed. Boats should now be much less likely to be pushed and stuck against a pier by a side wind, which is also a very good improvement. Uh, improve some collision with boats on the docks, especially around the bow and the, the bow and the stern. Uh, that's kind of good because the collisions with the bow and stern of certain boats was kind of was kind of sketchy at certain points. And there's a lot of bug fixes which I'm not going to get into. Um, I suspect that sooner or later. There might be a little bit more added to that particular update, but for right now, that's a pretty decent miniature update, I, I will say. Okay, I'm going to point us a bit more in this direction. And then I think it'll be time for us to go to bed. Go ahead and hydrate first. All right, so I will see you guys in the morning. All right, guys, uh, good morning. It is now our second day of this voyage. Uh, the Dragon Cliffs is very much in the distance now. You can just kind of see it there on the side of the screen. Uh, so that will be the last time we see the Dragon Cliffs for a while, once it disappears over the horizon. Um, I'm wondering if next time we come back out this direction, if maybe we should try going south to the Firefish Lagoon. Because that might be like an actual fun navigation, navigational challenge, is going from all along to the Firefish Lagoon. And the Firefish Lagoon would be kind of an interesting challenge, especially once we get into the Sandbuck. Which also reminds me on another talking point, what the heck happened to Sim Gamer TV? Like, he just stopped uploading Selwyn videos without really saying anything. Kind of unfortunate, but... Oh, well, he seems to be having fun with uh, Kerbal Space Program 2, which, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to buy that game. I couldn't really get that much into the first one. The first one was at least kind of fun to just kind of mess around with, but I could never get past... Excuse me. Sorry about that, I had to sneeze. It just kind of caught me off guard. But yeah, as I was saying about the Kerbal Space Program, I could, I just couldn't get past the... Uh... I could never, like, properly land on the moon. I think I landed on the moon, like, one single time. And I called it a major victory right then and there. Just try to, trying to uh, figure out how much fuel you need to get to the moon and back to Kerbin was just such a pain in the butt. There, there were several times that I actually did it, but the more I, op the more often I played the game, the better I got at it, you know, would you believe. Um, but I just couldn't play that game, like, as much as I really needed to. It was never really one of my favorites. It was fun to play, don't get me wrong, but it was a game that you just kind of played whenever you were bored, and that was basically it. So long, Dragon Cliffs. See you at a later date, I suppose. Oh, breakfast. I forgot I had this fish out here. <laughs> yeah, there's one crate that had, like, one remaining fish. So I just took that fish out and... <laughs> put it on the table. All 
All right, well, I will see you guys whenever something interesting comes along. All right, good morning once again, guys. Uh, this is the dawn of day four, I want to say, into our journey to Alonk. Uh, not a lot has happened. We haven't even encountered a storm yet. I would have recorded that. Though the wind is starting to shift on us, so we might need to kind of angle these back a little bit. That should be good. I'll call that good, and then... I'll call that good as well. Okay, we are also... Heading roughly the right direction. I'm, I'm going to start having us head like directly west from this point on, though. As much as I possibly can. And, uh, yeah. Not a lot has happened. I suppose that's part of the problem whenever you're playing this game or trying to record it is there's very, very little land in the game. There's not a lot to really see once you're out on the open ocean. I mean, today is a lot worse than than yesterday in terms of the weather, I suppose. Like, the waves are really going at it. But yeah, yesterday was basically just clear sailing. Well, <laughs> it's the ocean, so what are you going to do? Oh, well, take a look at this. Apparently, it's starting to rain a little bit. I just got out of the shower, so I'm not entirely sure where I'm at right now. Huh, got a rainbow. Yeah, the wind's still pretty much at her back now, so that's that's good. Good news, at least. Um, yep, yeah, I'm gonna take a wild guess and just say it's like evening hours of the fourth day still, because I I headed for my shower like whenever I got towards whenever I ended that last segment of recording, so. Probably in there for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. It wouldn't be crazy if I sailed through like an entire thunderstorm or something. <laughs> Let's see, it is... What is that, 4.50 or 4... 425 almost of of local time or dragon clips time I think might try and do an actual reading whenever noon comes around tomorrow if possible it's very possible with the current weather that we might be in for a storm tomorrow, but if we have clear skies, sounds like there's some thunder outside as well. We are supposed to get some rain. Hang on a second. Weather. Yeah, light chances of rain, just little tiny sprinkles and whatnot. Nothing too drastic. Uh, 
All right. Well, with the sun setting, I will cut out here and I'll see you guys again in the event that something interesting happens. Well, we seem to have waken up in the middle of a storm. It's not great, if I'm going to be honest, and there's a lot of thunder outside my house. Um, make sure we're still on course, which we are not. Honestly, at this point, it probably wouldn't hurt for the compass to start, like, pointing a bit more southward, but... If we haven't ventured too far north, we should still be able to see uh, Gold Rock City off in the distance whenever, whenever we get close enough. So it's not a full-on storm, but it is raining pretty hard. And at the moment, I can't really see any signs of a storm coming in. Like an actual, you know, death cloud. But the sun's coming up, so that's good. Well, well! Looky here. I think it's safe to say we are finally out of the Dragon Cliffs region because the water is no longer green. We now have this nice blue ocean water, which means that we're not too far off from uh, Alonk at this point. We're at least halfway by now. Uh, noon today, I might try and do a reading to find out where the heck we are exactly. Let me see here. If, if I remember correctly, longitude zero is noon exactly, then that would mean like 1156 would be negative one, 1152 would be negative two, 11. 48 would be negative 3, 1144 would be negative 4, and then 1140 would be negative 5. So let's check this out. Ah, gosh darn it, I think I missed my opportunity to check the time. Yeah, or, yeah, our, lo our longitude. It's such a narrow gap. You really got to be paying attention to it. Oh, well. Uh, we've been pretty much facing west the entire time, so we should see all on or Gold Rock City in the distance in the not too distant future. Hopefully, anyway. Okay, I think it's about time we take our reading now, like officially. <laughs> um, this is the next day. Okay, so it's... It's like the next day in real life. Okay, so it is in fact exactly noon. You know, sometimes I really cannot tell how you're supposed to do this. It's all right. I, I don't know. This is... <laughs> I guess I just got over here too late. I don't know. But yeah, this is the next day, uh, IRL. It's uh, currently 9 o'clock in the morning. Just got out of bed.
And still no sign of Gold Rock City on the horizon, but we should be seeing it before too long. Hopefully. Might just go and scan the horizon with the telescope. See if I can see anything sticking out of the water. Not yet. <clears throat> Maybe tomorrow we'll have uh, Gold Rock City in sight. But so far, throughout this entire journey, we've had pretty favorable winds. Haven't really had any significant issues this far, so... Pretty easy journey so far. Knock on wood. My desk is made of wood. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys whenever I have something else to report. After that failure of trying to figure out our longitude. Oh, hang on a second! Do I see what I think I see? There it is. Gold Rock City. It's kind of annoying, actually, because I went to bed, like, not too long before the city got into view. If I would have just kept going on for, like, another 30 minutes or so, I would have seen the city. And that would have given me the morale to continue on. Oh well, what can you do? At least this time we should hopefully be coming in with a more or less favorable wind. There have been times where I've come into Gold Rock City from the north and I had to fight the wind to get, in, get into the city. So, but we have almost made it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, looks like we might be getting to Gold Rock City sometime today. Provided that the wind keeps at our back. We might get there in the evening, perhaps the early hours of the morning. But on the bright side, <laughs> we no longer have to worry about navigating by the stars or the sun. We can finally just rely on visual navigation. And just head directly there. Somewhere out here, there's going to be another island. Albacore Town. I wonder if we could spot that. Top up here. Okay, there's Gold Rock City. That's the little bit that sticks out. Um, it'd be helpful if the waves would die down. Well, so far, I don't see any other islands, so... It's kind of one reason I suggest that new players don't start in this region. This is technically the easier start, but... The islands in this region are so incredibly tiny... That it's, it's really hard to see where the heck you're going. You really have to rely on your compass. to uh, figure out where the heck you're going. <clears throat> Whereas in regions like the Dragon Cliffs and especially Aestrin, you don't really have to have your tools with you at all times. You can literally just kind of see where you're going from the get-go. The only exception in Aestrin being uh, Eastwind. But, moving right on along, hello, <clears throat> K 
Okay, what island are you? I want to say Albacore Town, but... It's got to be Albacore Town. There's nothing else out here. Yeah, because I think I can make up buildings on that island with all the palm trees. Almost there. Almost. Well, here we are, people. Gold Rock City at last. Something from nothing. Life lessons come one in a dozen. 
the other life and get something from nothing. Life changes, just open the door. But one thing's certain, I'll always be yours. Let's go ahead and start unpacking everything. It took us six days to get here, I believe. There you go. Now we can start unpacking all of this. All right, all eight crates of tea have been brought off the ship. So let's go ahead and sell. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh wow, um, that was actually in Emerald Dragons. But we're up to 53,000 now. Holy crap. All right, well, uh, let's see what we have going going around here, shall we? So we have Salmon going to All My Lum for a pretty decent amount, as well as All Long Academy. Not bad. Dates. Nobody wants dates. Although with as many dates as you can carry... Well, there's actually only seven for sale, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so salmon is not a bad export here in this region. What about coconuts? Oh. Oh, my. So, not malefic. And East Wind are the two most well-paying jobs in Aestrin if we want to take coconuts. Might not be a bad idea, in all honesty. What about lamb? Okay, no one, no one really wants lamb here, but... I mean, it's not terrible pricing. Tuna. Okay, nobody wants tuna here. Goat cheese. What about rum? Wine. 
wine, perhaps? Oh, yeah. A lot of places here want want wine. <laughs> uh, ooh, even more want pork. Bananas? Nah. Astrin could do with some bananas, though. Hundred fifty-six thousand. Holy crap! What about copper? I could totally take some copper back to uh, the Firefish Lagoon. The Dragon Cliffs also pays pretty decent. Okay, but Astrin doesn't really care too much. Spices? Books. Well, what do you know? We finally found a person that actually wants some books. Ona and Sina. Goods. What about silk? Okay, Astrin wants silk. What about mead? Cave mushrooms? Now, these are all from, like, the Firefish Lagoon anyway, so I don't imagine they're going to be exporting them back or importing them. Blue tobacco? Okay, that's interesting. Like, there's not a single positive income. But Alchemist Island wants some tobacco, or brown tobacco specifically. Oh. Okay, everybody wants their weed, though, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, the Academy is... Going for three grand. What about white tobacco? Nobody wants white tobacco. It's all about the weed. Leather? No. Rabbit furs? No. So I guess what we're going to be doing next time is we're going to be exporting some green tobacco to probably All Lunk Academy. But first things first is I need to... Uh, Exchange some currency here. Oh. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, that's going to be as close as I can get, I think. So that brings me up to 5.9 grand. Just one little tiny emerald dragon. <laughs> okay, uh, what if we do... That might almost be worth it. How much does a sandbuck cost? You know what? Let's go look at this thing in the daytime. All right. 
Morning of the next day, let's go check out this sandbuck. Probably my favorite boat in the game. 75 gold. I can totally afford that. The question is, can I afford all like all the upgrades and stuff that I'd want to make? Or should I just stick with the with the junk? Ooh, decisions, decisions. Okay, well, first off, let's go get some stuff to eat. Oh, yeah, I also have some things I need to sell, but I will show you guys around the uh, the market here, because this is probably the best market in the game. It just feels a lot more alive to me than Fort Astrin. And I just, I like the look of it a lot more than uh, the Dragon Cliffs. Ooh, actually, I could also buy some stoves and stuff if I needed to. So I've got, yeah... Buying a stove with some firewood and some fishing rods would not be the worst idea in the world. Uh, I could buy a bed. Uh, what to do, what to do. Okay, that's how much it's going to cost me to convert this currency over to 75 gold coins. And how much is the green tobacco selling for? Oh, I can buy, like, plenty of it. Although, it looks like the pricing went down. It's kind of unfortunate. So what's the big thing now? Brown tobacco? No. Oh, you know what? I think it was on the uh, the old currency. It was on that. Yeah, I was still on this currency. That's that's what the problem was. Um, okay, so. I think I can just go ahead and sell or I can go ahead and just convert some of this money over cuz let me let me show you the sandbuck real quick. I did not show you guys the uh the interior of this thing. The sandbuck is just it's a very good middle of the road kind of ship. It's got a lot of cargo space. And it has a really good piloting area. You've got like a separate cabin down here where you can put all your, your belongings and stuff. Then you have like an actual dedicated hold for all your cargo and stuff. So I think the the thing to do would, actually, would be to actually buy the ship. And honestly, you know, the junk has served us well. But, I mean, looking at this thing, I think the character that we're playing as is, you know, we are role-playing, technically. Um, he'd be looking at this and being like, lots of cargo space, very good uh, piloting area. Although, the, the helm is kind of in the wind. I've never noticed that, or, or uh, in the elements. I've, I've never really noticed that before. <laughs> like, the, the cloth, the roof needs to kind of come out over the helm a bit. And I've seen some people configure this thing in a really, really cool way. Like, they have, like, a single mass, but I've seen some guy on Discord. He's got his ship set up to where it can go, like, a ridiculous speed. So I might just go ahead and buy the Sandbuck, but I'll make that decision off screen so you don't bore you guys too much. 
But since this video is going on for almost an hour now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please have a like, leave a comment. I'm going to experiment with some stuff off screen, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, God bless, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!